Hello, hello, and welcome back to 100 Days of Magic, our epic series when we're exploring all the simple little tips and tricks that you can use to bring more magic into your life right now. If you haven't met me before, I am Donna Woodwell. I am the organizer of this space, the Crossroads of Magic and Mastery, which is a place where you can come and find out all kinds of things happening in the magical communities, whether those magical communities be, be astrology or tarot or spell casting, whatever, this is a place held open for people to share their work in the world to help everyone get the tools they need to create a more magical life. That means, especially for all you content creators out there, those of you who are writing the blog posts and uh, creating amazing pieces of art and all other kinds of things to help people feel closer to the divine, feel free to share your stuff here. This is not like a lot of other groups that are on Facebook where advertising is discouraged because here I want you to share. Share your classes, share your books, share the amazing things that you have made or even that you have discovered on your searches across the internet so that other like-minded people can get the benefit of learning what you are doing. That is the whole point of the crossroads. I personally happen to own a school of magic and mastery. Over the last few years, I have been making over 130 hours of training in all the magical arts, whether they be astrology and tarot and Kabbalah, the big languages or the smaller kinds of little useful bits of information like how to use a pendulum or how to use a scrying disc or how to work with your dreams. All of that is inside the school of magic and mastery. So, but today, we're going to talk about what you can do more specifically for your magical act of the day. Our title is Everyday Magic Food. So hello, Christine. Hello, Boris. Hello, Claudia. Welcome back here. I'm glad you are all tuning in today as we continue our efforts to make our magic into more of a habit, more of something that we see the world, that we're changing our perspective to see the world in new and magical ways. So as we talk about food, in an earlier, in an earlier session together, when we were talking about the body and magic and mastery, how if you would just see your body as the temple for your soul, really feel your body as a temple for your soul, how would you interact with it differently? If you see yourself as sacred as you move through the world, you might consider how you treat yourself. You might consider what you eat and drink on a regular basis because do you want your temple to be run down and covered in graffiti or do you want your temple to be strong and able to carry the light? I don't mean graffiti in a negative sense. I'm just, I'm trying to compare and contrast here. How would you like to honor the light within yourself? And an easy way to start that process, that dialogue with yourself is to consider the food you eat every day. Because most of us that I know of need to eat on a regular basis. We don't eat for extended periods of time. We don't exist on this earth for very long. And so, we have the capacity to see the food that we put in us as the gift from the earth that it is to enable us to continue to live and manifest spirit in the world. And if you happen to be walking a magical path and are starting to work with the concepts that as, as above, so below, you recognize that things on different levels of our continuum tend to rhyme. At the, at the utmost level, things manifest as numbers and colors, but when they come down here, they are the infinite diversity that you see all around us. And a magician, someone or, or a witch or a shaman, someone who is working constructively with the programming language of manifestation, begins to learn how 
all of these ingredients are related from above to below. Most people here who are listening to me might have some familiarity with astrology. Astrology is the number one organizational tool for dividing up the teams of manifestation, so to speak, in the West. We use the seven visible planets, so that's the Sun and the Moon, plus Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, as like a set of crayons with seven in the box, or a prism filter of the rainbow. If you didn't know this, uh, Isaac Newton named the colors of the rainbow, decided that there should be seven of them in order to honor the planets. So there are literally seven colors of the rainbow because there are seven visible planets and each color gets a sign. So at this very basic level, you can begin planet, color, thing that reminds you of that planet and color as an organizing tool for understanding and classifying pretty much everything. So today I brought some I brought some show and tell things. I just raided my kitchen before I came in here to help give us some things that we could use to go through this process together. So here I have a container of pepper flakes, red pepper flakes. Ever seen red pepper flakes? They look like little red discs. And of course they're pepper, so they're hot and spicy. You might see people put them on their pizza or in Italian food. Red pepper flakes would be associated with which planet? Hopefully they're red and they're hot. So you might say Mars and I would say, yay! Understand with this system, things can get even more complicated than that. Red pepper flakes, pretty easy Mars association. Or we could get a little more sophisticated, like here's a box of chai. What planet would you associate with chai? Well, chai has black pepper, which is black like Saturn. Chai has got some herbs in it like cinnamon and um, other warming herbs that are traditionally associated with Jupiter. So it's got some Jupiter herbs in it. If you were to make this all up and fix it up pretty, it would have some honey or something else sweet in it, which Venus would like. You might put some milk in it, which the moon would like, since the moon is white. Uh, it might be hot, which could associate it with Mars or maybe the sun. It has some caffeine, which definitely Mars would like. So here in this happy little container, we have representations of all of the colors of the rainbow, so to speak. So it's like a little altar in a box. Where you're, where you're calling down the energies of all the planets. So whether it's more direct or multiple, everything has planets associated with it. And you don't have to just pick one per item. You can recognize that different qualities work for different planets, okay? So same lines. Here we have salt, my salt shaker. <laughs> salt is white. So that could be the moon and salt is also in the oceans. So a good association for doing moon magic is a little bit of salt. Black pepper, uh, regular black pepper could be Saturn for the blackness or Mars for the pepperiness. Chamomile could be, oh, let's say the moon for relaxing. Um, Maybe Mercury, because anything that calms us down and helps us to be clear thinking could be Mercury. Um, I don't see any pictures of chamomile flowers here, but if you could see chamomile flowers, they're, they, have a little, um, they have a little yellow center, so you might have a little bit of sun in here for the yellowness of the flowers. Here we have an apple. There's a knife over here somewhere. So this apple is sweet. It's got lots of water in it, so the moon would like it. It's red on the outside, some of some red, so maybe a little bit of Mars in there. But sweetness is usually Venus. And if we slice the wrap, the apple open, and if I can get to the middle. Oh wait, do I get an apple that I didn't have any seeds in it? All right, I got the middle, hold on. <laughs> there we go. There you go, so if you open the apple to see the seeds, 
you can see that they have a little pentagram in the middle. So apples might be associated with Venus also because they have the pentagram in the middle and the Venus is typically associated with a pentagram because she has a, a five pointed orbit relationship, five to eight relationship with the orbit of Venus to the earth. So all of these things, all of these examples should be enough to realize that if you're going in to choose to cook or to eat, make your own recipes, everything has the potential not just to feed your body, but to feed your psyche in a very specific way. So let's say you want more love in your life. Anytime you pick up a slice of apple is an opportunity to take a bite and invite more love into your life through the mediary of the food that you are eating. When you learn how to be still and present, so you're not just eating to mindlessly eat, but eating to be part of something larger than yourself, you recognize that there is a whole layer of reality that you begin to unlock when you actually taste the food that you are eating. And you begin to interact with the world in a whole new way. You could learn nothing else about magic and spell casting other than learning how to eat with intention. Understanding what each of the planetary energies is, see them reflected in the foods that you eat and cook with, and, and work with that paradigm consciously as you make the meals that nourish yourself, your family, your loved ones. Again, what a different world you could create for yourself if you just take a few minutes to bring a little bit of consciousness into the everyday acts of life. You recognize that you've heard music. Some music is happy and exuberant. Other music is uh, soothing and, and relaxing uh, and everything in between. That in a sense, all of the food that you eat is like music. It's just made out of food instead of made out of sounds. And because of that, you are learning how to play with the different kinds of energies in your own life, learning what to attract to you, what you need more of, and aligning your choices to fit with those needs. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but think about it. This is magic that you're going to do any, you have to eat, right? You have to make the choices already. So before you go out and buy like huge cabinets, cabinets of expensive magical equipment, just go to the grocery store and find things that remind you of the energies that you want to attract into your life because it's available. It's not going to cost you anything else than you are already doing. And it has the side benefit. You might be happier. You might be healthier. And you certainly will have an awful lot more fun as you learn to relate to more around you. Want to take it even a step further? You can do what we talked about doing yesterday in our session on everyday use of magic in drinking water, if you take a moment before you take a bite out of these things to think of them as connected to spirit, that this is as connected to spirit as you are. It's connected to the earth below because it's grown from the earth. It's connected to above from the pattern that connects all things. And if you recognize the spiritual essence in this and wake it up before you eat it, Again, it becomes a sacrament. The everyday things can become part of your communion with the divine and bringing, because ultimately from the alchemist to the magicians and beyond, the purpose of life is to bring more spirit into matter and to make matter more spiritual. And you can perform that alchemy for yourself by taking a fraction of a second before you take a bite to recognize the spiritual essence in this 
and the spiritual essence in you are part of the same one thing. Ultimately, that's the meaning of the word namaste. The divine within me salutes the divine within you. And the apple and everything else in the form. Okay? All right, so that's my session for today. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the magic, everyday magic in breath, so that we can continue recognizing that the things that we have to do to stay alive can become magical acts in themselves. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. You can add them right now if you want to share your own experiences and what this means to you. If this is a practice that you're already doing, I'd love to hear about it. And I bet other people would love to hear about your experiences too. As I said, this space I hold open for all of you who are wanting to continue the journey with other people. Recognize that you are not alone in wanting to live more magically and whether you choose to do that by following the stars or flipping open tarot cards or anything else, you are not alone. And if you happen to be a content creator in these areas, I highly suggest you use this space to share what you're doing because that's how we begin to support each other. We can celebrate the more the merrier. The more people who are doing this work, the better for all of us. We are all, every time one of us chooses to bring a little bit of more spirit down to matter, that benefits the whole. It benefits all of us. Okay? I don't see any questions today, so I will wrap this up our little 15 minutes a day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we talk about the magic of breath. So until then, I'm going to go back to eating this lovely apple that I cut, that I just cut up, and I hope you all have an equally wonderful day. <laughs>